What's up guys, uh, another Sabbath Torah reading, Exodus 3. Now Moses was pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God, which is uh, Mount Sinai. And Moses is a type and shadow of Jesus. And a flock is us. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. Now I believe the angel of the Lord, from my understanding, I believe that's Yeshua. I believe that's Jesus in the Old Testament. Not an angel of the Lord, but the angel of the Lord. Whenever you see the angel of the Lord, this one, the one that spoke with, uh, the one that wrestled with Jacob, the one that uh, appeared to Gideon, and other places in Scripture, when it, when it says, uh, actually, when David, David too, when he uh, when he sinned, and he had the options between he was basically being punished for counting the people for his own pride, and he had the options of whether to have three years of famine or three months of running from their enemies, uh, or three days of pestilence, three days of the sword of the Lord, and it, and it describes the angel of the Lord, the, not an angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, Jesus, destroying, I think, 70,000 people, and standing over top of Jerusalem with the sword drawn, ready to destroy Jerusalem. But that's the same, the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. Imagine looking at that. Imagine seeing a bush burning, like a tree burning, and burning, and burning, and burning, and a leaf still green, nothing burning up. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight while the bush is not burned up. When the Lord, Yahweh, I believe, I'm not using a translation that uses, uses Yahweh. When Yahweh saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, now let me stop real quick. It's the angel of the Lord which appeared to him in the bush. And then next thing you know it says God called to him from the midst of the, from the midst of the bush. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, "Moses, Moses." And he said, "Here I am." Then he said, do, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God of your father. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look at God. Now, In the New Testament, Jesus said, when speaking to the Jews, You haven't seen the Father, nor heard his voice. And then the Apostle John said, No one has seen the Father, but the only begotten has explained him. 
Then we have here God calling to Moses. Moses, Moses. And then Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. So that can't be the Father, right? That's my understanding. My understanding is it, it was Jesus. It was Yeshua. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who were in Egypt. And Egypt. It's all a, it's all a type of shadow. Everything repeats. Everything. What happened before happens again. When you see Egypt in prophecy, speaking of the world now, the Lord said, "I've surely, I've surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have given heed to their cry, because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I've come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians, and to bring them up." From that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Just like Jesus is going to rescue us. He's going to bring us out, out of this world. Into a spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come up to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. <laughs> Just like Jesus, Yeshua, is going to bring us out of the world, out of this wicked world. And let me be clear, we're not going to, even if we're taken to heaven, we're not staying in heaven. Heaven's coming to earth, basically. The new Jerusalem is coming down, and we're going to dwell with Christ on earth. And after all sin and death is destroyed, after the great white throne judgment, after the thousand year reign of Christ, the Father is going to dwell with us too. Therefore come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Just like us. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you, that it, that it is I who have sent you, and when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Now, as a type and shadow, we can take that a couple of ways. Uh, depending on translation of the scripture, some people believe that we're going to be taken to Mount Sinai on earth. When, when Jesus comes back and saves the church of Philadelphia. Not all believers in Jesus are true believers. And we just, we need to pray we're in the church of Philadelphia. We need to pray we're found, just like Jesus told us to, pray we're found worthy to escape the time, to escape all the things that are coming upon this world. And if we are, some people think, that we're going to be taken out of the way for the indignation, for the, for the worst part of it, and brought back down to dwell at Mount Sinai. 
here on Earth in Saudi Arabia. But this could also be a reference to Zion, the mountain, well, Zion in heaven, the mountain of God in heaven, which I'm leaning towards. It says you should worship God at this mountain. And this is just, I'm just talking about this as a type of shadow. But, but the 144,000 in Revelation 14 are seen on Mount Zion with Yeshua, with Jesus, with the Lamb. Whether that's Mount Zion in heaven, I don't know. I do believe so. I guess we'll see. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. And I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now a lot of people take this and, sit and, and say that his name is I am. But his name is yod heh vav -Heh, which is the four Hebrew, the four letters. In English, Y-H-W-H or Y-H-V-H. One of the two pronounced Yahweh by most people. About the I am thing, if any, any of you guys listen to rap music, one of my old, uh, I, I used to listen to secular rap. I used to, I, I was the biggest hip hop head. And one of my favorite artists was Nas, N-A-S, Nas. And his, uh, I believe it was his second album, one of his one of his first albums, his second or third album, was called I Am. And he's on a cover, on the cover, looking like Pharaoh or has some, something to do with that. But I didn't realize until I started reading the Bible that it was just a mockery of God. He was calling himself God, just like Jay-Z calls himself Jehovah, like Jehovah, because that's another pronunci pronunciation of yod heh vav -Heh, which I, I believe is Yahweh. Some people think it's Jehovah, and there's other pronunciations of the name. But Jay-Z Jay uses Jehovah, Jehovah the God MC. Even though he's working for Satan. And then the Nas album was called I Am. Come on, man. Hope you guys see this. Unreal. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I Am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. Yahweh, yod heh vav -Heh, y h w h Y-H-V-H the actual name of God go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them Yahweh the God of your fathers the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me saying I am indeed concerned about you and what has been done to you in Egypt so I said I will bring you out of the out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite 
and a Perizzite, and a Hivite, and a Jebusite, to a land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will pay heed to what they say, or to, to what you say. God speaking to Moses. And you, with the elders of Israel, will come to the king of Egypt, and you will say to him, Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. So now, please, let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahweh our God, to, to the Lord our God. Now the three days is interesting. Because you'll find three days all through scripture. If you go three days, or after two days, on the third day, from Jesus, his first coming, is his second coming, which is very soon now. Three days from his first coming, after three days, is the end of the millennial kingdom and the beginning of eternity. It's great white throne judgment and eternity. That's three days. So now, please, let us go for three days, for a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord, our God, to Yahweh our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go, except under compulsion. So I will stretch out my hand, and I will strike Egypt, with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, he will let you go. Just like this coming time, the tribulation time, See, the world, Egypt represents the world. And God is going to strike the world with all kind of plagues. I will grant this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you go, you will not go empty-handed. For every woman shall ask of her neighbor and the woman who lives in her house articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And you will put them on your sons and daughters. Thus you will plunder the Egyptians. <laughs> and that's the end of Exodus 2. Now Exodus 3. May God bless you guys.